ever seen this one. This is ridiculous. We don't have a budget problem in the UC. We have a distribution problem. I propose, I propose that we fire Drake. And the, the minimum starting salary for a lecturer is roughly 60K. We could hire 15 more lecturers for his salary. While we're at it, let's just fire Carol Chris too. Now we're up to 25 more lecturers. That's 100, that's 150 classes a year. Think about that. We could teach 150 more classes for two people's salary. That's the situation we're in here. This is not an issue of the budget. Yeah, the state needs to give us more money, but if you were Gavin Newsom, and you were to look at Carol Chris's salary, President Drake's salary, and they're coming up and asking for more money, what are you gonna say? No way. Get your house in order. Start, treat, start lowering your salary and raising the salary of the people who do all the work. It's milking its revenue from student tuition. Student tuition that is driving students further into debt. They keep enrolling more and more and more students that they can't even house. But instead of hiring faculty to teach those students, they're hiring lecturers to, hire, to teach those students. Why? Because if they hire faculty like me, with security of employment, with proper salaries and proper ben benefits and pensions, we're expensive. If they hire lecturers, they feel lecturers are cheap and disposable. And surprise, surprise, if you're taught by a lecturer, you're more likely to be taught by a woman or a scholar of color. There are now almost as many lecturers on our campus as there are faculty. Simply because, as we've learned, the median salary of a lecturer is just 19,000 a year. 19,000 a year. The median salary of faculty is 163,000 a year. Do the math. You see it's balancing its books on the backs of lecturers. Let's see if President Drake, who earns a million dollars a year, doesn't even have to pay for his housing, could afford to live in the Bay Area on $19,000 a year. Lecturers just don't need a living wage. They need to be treated not like disposable gig workers. They need security. They need a fire contract and they need it now. And as we've heard, it's not just lecturers who suffer from this ridiculous deal. It's students too. The working conditions of lecturers are the learning conditions of students. So President Drake, I know you can't hear me because you're not here, but the Berkeley Faculty Association stands behind the lecturers of this campus in their demand for a fair contract and a fair contract now. What we know and what UC does not understand is that teaching is about relationships. It is a job that extends beyond the classroom. For more than a quarter of lecturers don't return to teach their classes each year because they can't live on a, on a low salary, they are let go without reason, or they just simply can't live with the precarity of not knowing whether they have a job next term. What this means for students is that you're able to, you're unable to find mentorship, you're unable to find people to write you letters of recommendation, or to find other kinds of extra classroom support. President Michael Drake can change this now. for all our labor.
labor. If Lucy meets these demands, it will take a step away from the shortchanging of his teaching mission, a step away from the neoliberal austerity logic that has been starving academic departments and programs, and a step toward reinvestment in our teaching mission. community since 1998. I was a graduate student in San Diego. I've been on the faculty here for a really long time. It's been a really great privilege to be part of this community. We've all been unbelievably... Sorry, Khaled is showing me you're using the microphone wrong. Thank you. Uh, we've been so proud when we were told by Forbes magazine that I don't really read, but they told us that we are the number one university in the world. Largely because we're all of a sudden paying attention to the number of Pell Grant recipients in this place, which is a wonderful thing. Berkeley has been called the social accelerator. We're launching careers, raising incomes, raising well-being of society. So what surprises me, frankly, is that when I look inside the house that I work in, that there are two separate rooms here. Where one room, the room I'm in, as a tenured faculty member, I get regular raises, I get fair and transparent reviews, uh, I get comfortable teaching roles, and I have security of employment for life. When I look at my peers, my friends, my colleagues in Unit 18, they don't enjoy those privileges. And what I want to make absolutely clear here is that some of the most amazing instructors I've had the privilege of working with, of looking at the classroom, and frankly going for help to, with how do I teach the following, have been my friends in Unit 18. So I... I have no influence over President Drake other than these three minutes right here. But I just want to stand here in solidarity with Unit 18 and say, I see you, I see all that you do, I'm unbelievably grateful for what you do for, not us, but for the students and helping improve the well-being of not just Californians, but folks across the world. This school is about creating positive change, and you are part of the core of what creates that positive change. So thank you, and I'm really hoping that the folks in the UC, OP, or whatever that big gray building in Oakland is called, see the light and give you a fair contract. Ben Brown, he's a, he's a lecturer in legal studies, and he has a really important message about how things are going in the negotiations. Thank you all. I'm here to deliver one simple message. The university fears you. They are afraid of this information picketing. They are afraid that people are going to hear our message. They have done everything they can in the last week to stop this process. They've asked us to call off the picketing. They, on late Monday night, they sent out a proposal outside of mediation. We've been in mediation for two and a half months, three and a half months. And they violated the rules of, of, I think they violated them, they at least violated the norms of mediation by sending out a proposal that you all got a summary of yesterday in your emails. They did that because they were afraid of this picket. The UC is afraid of you. We've been telling the UC, give us a proposal. Go back into open bargaining where our hundreds of, of our members can join over the Zoom link and see your proposal. But also see our team point out the problems with your proposal. And they refuse to do it. They are afraid of you. They don't want to be transparent. They don't want you to know what they're doing. They don't want you to get a chance to hear us confront them about what they're doing. So take this message away. It's you that give the power to the bargaining team and to the whole UCAFT to get a contract that we want and that we deserve.
Thank you for being here today and showing that power and keep it up. We need you and you need the power. Thank you, Ben. We need you. We're so grateful for everything you've done for us over the last two and a half years. Can you guys give Ben another round of applause? He works so hard. He works so hard on our behalf. Next, we want to hear from some students, James, who I am so inspired by. He's the kind of student that makes lectures proud, really proud. Um, he's ASDC VP of External Affairs. He's helped us so much in this campaign, so I really want to thank him. Uh, but he also has some few words for you. Good afternoon, Berkeley! My name is James Weikert. I'm the ACC Academic Affairs Vice President and a proud member of UAW 2865. And I'm here to stand in solidarity with UCFT, the union of lecturers and librarians who make up the backbone of the undergraduate educational experience here at Berkeley and throughout the UC. I'm also here to explain why our fates as undergraduates are intertwined with those of our lecturers and why we need to care about the demands that UCAFT are making. I've been at Berkeley since 20, uh, 2019 and I've taken 19 classes in that time. Out of those 19 classes, eight of them have been taught by lecturers. These are the people teaching around half of the content that I've learned here at Berkeley, and some of these lecturers are not even around any longer, less than two years later. Lecturers matter to under, yeah. Lecturers matter to undergraduates because they are the instructors we interface with most often. Lecturers give us extra help in office hours, they write us letters of recommendation, thank you for that. And they engage with us as people, not just as another grade in Cal Central. Lecturers matter to undergraduates because out without them, there wouldn't be any undergraduate academic experience. Lecturers also matter because when lecturers win, undergraduates win. Lecturers stand side by side with undergraduate students against tuition hikes. They support our graduate student instructors in their, cost for, uh, their calls for a cost of living increase. And they are fighting with us to ensure that this university is safe and accessible as we return to in-person learning while still in the middle of a deadly right. pandemic. What UCAFT is demanding is a living wage, stability of employment, and recognition that lecturers are critical to the teaching mission of this university. That should be the bare minimum that the number one public university in the world should provide its teachers. Yes. Lecturers care about students, so it's time that we as students start caring about our lecturers. It's time to take a stand and it's time to demand a fair contract now. 43%, we make up 43% of the UC Berkeley faculty, but we only make up 13% of faculty salaries. This is not just, this is not fair, and I know our students know that, and that's why we're fighting today. So our last speaker, who is a beloved colleague of mine and a very, very popular uh, lecturer, professor across campus, and that is Colin. A side note, like Max is my boss. Somewhat awkward to come up here and be like, okay, Max is gonna say something and I'm gonna come up and correct the mistakes. He didn't make any mistakes, thanks Max. But right before I came here, like literally the last email I got before I came here. Now mind you, I've been teaching on this campus for 12 years. Three classes every semester for 12 years. 
the last email I got before I came here, I was told, hey, guess what? I'm happy to let you know that you're going to have a full-time job next semester because we weren't sure. I'm like, WTF, 12 years, I still don't know if in three months I'm going to have a full-time job. That's freaking ridiculous, right? Instead of putting my energy into being here with all of you, I'm having to put my energy into thinking about, well, what's the side gig I'm going to get to make sure I can cover rent? That's a waste of my time. That's totally inefficient. And every single other lecturer I know in here is always thinking about that. What's gonna, what am I going to do when this thing ends up going south because the university totally impersonally and inhumanely decides that, oh, we don't have a full-time job for you right now. So before we can go to the state of California and ask them to give the UC more money, we need to think about how we spend that money. And we need to spend that money on paying lecturers better salaries, granting them security of employment, lowering tuition so that our students are no longer in debt. Despite what the, despite what the University of California thinks, this is not gig work. This is a real job. And we've been here, most of us have been here for a long time. The rest of us are trying to be here for longer with the constant pressure of uncertainty. And yet we're still doing it. We're still writing those letters of rec. We're still advising you on grad school. We're still showing up for department administrative work. And we're still doing it all for free. So we, we invited Chancellor Carol Chris to come here today. But I think she was a little busy. I think maybe, you know, after the pandemic, we all got used to just sitting around behind the screen. It was like a walk from California Hall to here. It's going to take time. I don't know if I have that time. So we're going to make it easy on her. Let's go to California Hall. And let's ask her to come out and tell us what future she hopes to see for this campus and for our lecturers. Who's University. Our university. Whose university? Our